All right, guys, we're finishing up uh, the Civil War, uh, and we're going to look at how it ends. Your essential question, how does the Civil War come to an end? Uh, in answering this, you should be able to address these four things. Explain why the Union victories at Vicksburg and Gettysburg were important. Uh, describe Grant's plan for ending the war with the South. Identify Lincoln's hopes for the Union after his reelection, And then lastly, explain why the uh, Civil War was a turning point in American history. So let's look at uh, Vicksburg and Gettysburg. Uh, Union forces uh, won major victories in the East and the West. Uh, to the West at, at Vicksburg, uh, captured by Grant, it gave complete control of the Mississippi. As we noted earlier, Mississippi uh, is very important in terms of trade, uh, commerce coming um, into the Gulf and then out to the Atlantic. Um, so Grant is able to capture Vicksburg, the key part of the Mississippi, uh, and so he laid siege to uh, this particular territory. And then most notably uh, to the East Gettysburg. This was a, a major turning point. So not are we getting a strategic um, uh, transportation system in the Mississippi River, but we're also uh, gaining a major victory at uh, Gettysburg. Okay. So basically after Chancellorville, uh, victories at Chancellorville and Fredericksville, Lee goes on the offensive. And so he moves north into Pennsylvania in hopes to swing down uh, to the south and capture D.C. Uh, unfortunately, he's met by General George Meade uh, at Gettysburg, and an ensuing battle takes place, and Lee finds himself in a three-day battle. All right, so the Confederates uh, initially are pushed back to a place called Cemetery Ridge. Uh, and then um, from there, the Confederates try to outflank uh, to the left and to the right to try and dislodge uh, Meade's army. Um, unfortunately. They're unsuccessful, uh, and so um, by the third day, uh, in desperation, uh, Pickett's charge, they try to uh, mount a frontal assault, and this frontal assault, um, again, is unsuccessful and leaves the Confederate Army with heavy casualties. And so, basically, um, this kind of, if you will, uh, Gettysburg took the sail out of the Confederates. Um, this is the last attempt to try and push the Union Army's uh, forces back, uh, and Lee is unsuccessful. So, President Lincoln, after um, this battle, uh, launches or addresses the people in the Gettysburg Address. He says, we here highly resolved that these dead shall not have died in vain these 50,000 men that were uh, killed and wounded at Gettysburg that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that the government of the people by the people for the people shall not perish from the earth and so again uh, resolving to bring hope a new beginning to our nation not just as uh, uh, Union Army or what but, but uh, United States of America uh, and we're going to talk later on how Lincoln uh, tries to include or we move toward healing uh, for all of the United States citizens all right Grant's uh, plan of total war again this is uh, basically an attempt to try and cripple the enemy end the war quickly uh, toward its uh, towards the end of the war uh, 1864 Grant is I'm asked by Lincoln to lead the Union forces uh, to end the war quickly until he adopts total war, basically uh, destroying the food, the equipment, and anything that's useful to its enemy as it uh, moved throughout the South. And we're going to see how the total war uh, really affected the South. All right, in the past, uh, war was just restricted to soldiers, but now civilians are involved. We're getting the idea of if your people are hurting, they're going to push their leadership to end the war quickly. Two examples, uh, Sheridan and the Shenandoah um, burned nearly 2,000 farms. This was kind of the mindset here of uh, these leaders uh, during total war. Leave nothing to invite the enemy to return. Destroy whatever cannot be consumed. Let the valley be left so that crows fly over it will have to carry their rations along with them. So again, laying this particular area that they come across to total uh, uh, non-use. 
And then famously, uh, Sherman's march uh, to the sea uh, through Georgia, out to South Carolina. Uh, in particular, South Carolina was one place where Sherman was really concerned um, for this idea of total war. Uh, because South Carolina being the first to secede from the Union, kind of seen as the, the culprit of all of this. Uh, again, following the same ideas of burning uh, land, uh, looting, um, taking up residence on civilian land, uh, and leaving the people in, in dire situations. It's important to note um, that even though this was a uh, new adopted um, form of fighting war for the Americans, um, Sherman was one who, who pushed back against um, outward violence against uh, civilians. It was all about taking the land, destroying the land, so that they couldn't use it. Here are some images of total war. And we'll analyze those a little later in class. So the war comes to, end, uh, to an end. Uh, Grant takes uh, Petersburg um, and Lee surrenders at Appomattox Courthouse. And I'll show you a picture of that a little later. So what were the terms of his surrender? All right, The soldiers, they got to uh, keep their pistols, um, yet they had to surrender um, their rifles. Uh, the soldiers got to keep their horses. They, and they were allowed to go home undisturbed. So again, this idea of trying to uh, win the war uh, and also allow uh, General uh, Lee to keep to save face and the soldiers to save face. Um, and we're going to discuss this later uh, when we look at the mending and the healing process uh, between the North and the South. So this is at least uh, signing at. Appomattox Hall Courthouse, sorry. All right, last section, uh, turning point in American history. Why was the Civil War a turning point? Okay, you have close to uh, 600,000 soldiers uh, lost uh, during this campaign. Uh, um, the idea that states would succeed uh, really came to an end. So this idea of, of branching out we saw that it, it cost too much to do that, and so secession was really not um, a major issue um, uh, here on out in our, our history. Federal government gained greater control, more power. Uh, slavery came to an end technically on the books, but we're going to see how its, uh, its head is still rearing up and, and um, new policies during Reconstruction that are adopted um, would pr uh, prolong um, somewhat what, we, what I'll discuss and talk about that still is slavery. Uh, then the U.S. emerged stronger are and freer. Here's what Lincoln said, and we'll end here. We here highly resolve that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. And so a turning point in U.S. history moves us into reconstruction or um, a new time of rediscovering uh, who we are as Americans. Look forward to uh, discussion in class. Write down your questions uh, and uh, make sure you write your summary or type up your summary into Moodle. Thanks, guys.